There we go. Comments will appear here. That's live. Hi, everyone. This is our first time doing live Facebook, and I don't know if I got everything set up correctly. And today I'm going to show you how to sew curves. If you've uh, ever wanted to do the Drunkard's Path before or um, fantasized about it and thought that's something you'll never be able to do, I'm going to show you how to do it fast and easy. While we're figuring out and sharing our page, um, you can or sharing this video, you can also share it with your friends. And uh, please uh, tell me where you're from in the comments below. And we'll go ahead and... Um, address any questions that you might have while we're getting ourselves ready for sewing. I'll we'll let some people come on early. The um, Drunkard's Path has always been elusive for a lot of people and a lot of things have been difficult for sewers. Just sewing a straight seam might be challenging for you. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Claire Rowley, inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products. These are products that I've developed to help everybody be really good at sewing, whether you have physical challenges or um, vision issues as well. So um, it's uh, something that you all can use on all of your machines. And um, now I'm hoping that we're starting to get some people on here. I'm going to go ahead and share. Michelle's going to bring the camera over and I'm going to face it on the fabric and the sewing machine. And... Uh, I'm gonna bring it on over. <laughs> it's a little awkward here. We don't have all of the equipment that we should. So here we go. Sorry about this. I know it's saying that, that we need to go to our page. And I don't know if it's, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen when it says it's going to go live. So we are trying to be perfect, but we're not. And I don't know if we're live at all right now. This is what needed to be done anyway. Hello, Joanne. So we are live somewhere. We just have to see it. Is it right here? Michelle, get your phone out and see if you can see where I'm live, please. On Facebook? Yes. So, Joanne, what kind of sewing machine do you have? Hi, Joan. Joanne Mowers is from Arizona. Are you from down in the valley or are you up where it's cool? Thanks for the like. Sorry that you're just staring at this. Um, Drunkard's Path has always been a little bit elusive for a lot of people. And uh, we don't just sew this. Sometimes we have to sew sleeves and other types of things. So we're now live on the on the actual post. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Quarter inch seam allowances have been difficult for a lot of people with the satin edge foot. We have this little wire inside of the of the foot right here and you can set the wire a quarter inch away from your sewing machine needle and rely on the foot to give you a perfect quarter inch. But the hardest thing for me on sewing a drunkard's path, I don't know about you, <laughs> Hi, you, hi, Mary from Houston. I will be there this fall. I hope to see you in my booth, in the Creative Feet booth. The um, hardest part for me on the Drunkard's Path is cutting the fabric. And so I'm going to show you. Just take the, I'm going to show you. You're going to take the camera. And here we, don't let it fall. Hold it right here. There we go. This is the crossover machine and this is one of our dies that lets you cut your fabric by simply laying the die down on top. <coughs> the benefit of that is that you can fussy cut so if I wanted to I could have made this into 
a drunkard's path pattern instead of doing a four square triangle or quarter square triangle. So you can cut more than one piece at a time. I've got six layers of material here. This little metal plate protects the uh, platform beneath it and then this goes on top and then it has this little pressure dial right here that allows you to change the pressure setting based on how many layers of material are on there. Of course you can use any method you want for cutting your pieces out for it. Now you're going to hear crunching and it's perfectly normal for it to make the noises that it's going to make. And this is how I made all my pieces this morning, getting ready for this filming. And before I pull it out, I always flip it over and we look and see if we've gotten all of our pieces cut. You can see how it's cut through those six layers of material. So that's how I got all of my little pieces ready. We don't want to spend too much time on that because the part you guys are most challenged with is the cutting or the actual sewing part, right? And I think it'll be really fun. I did this on my Facebook page. I asked and many of my Facebook group, um, which will have a link on the bottom of this video so that you can join it if you're not all, already a member. But I asked them to brag and say how many sewing machines they had, what make and what model, and I'm now going to challenge you as well. This is so much fun. They had so much fun sharing their sewing machine makes and models. Um, so go ahead and hit the comments below. And <clears throat> if any of you have ever had a difficult time sewing a curve before, I want you to hit the wow face, and then you'll know each other, which one of you has also had the problem. And you can feel free to chat with each other as we go ahead and proceed. And here we go. So bring it over here. What I'm at shows I'm a lot more animated and I decided to show you this actual video of how I show the actual process at a show. It's a lot harder for me to look through the camera while showing this. Hi Lynn. It's so nice to have you with me. Lynn is a very, very regular customer at creativefeet.com. I appreciate you very much, as all of my customers. Mm -hmm. So here we have two pieces of material, and your goal is to put these two fabrics together. Seems simple enough until you realize that in order to do so, you have to lay them down like this in order to sew your quarter inch seam allowance. So there's all kinds of methods out there, uh, folding in the middle and pinning, 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 pinning. And those of you who know me know that I try never to use pins if I don't have to. Uh, if you like pinning, I'm not uh, criticizing it. But what you really want to do is just, are you really trying to sew a curve or are you trying to maintain a quarter inch distance away from the edge of the material? And you really are just trying to maintain a quarter inch, correct? So what you want to do is pretend the fabrics are straight. I know that sounds funny, but that is what you want to do. And just bring the two points together, making sure that the fabric is flat or flush with the other one be behind it. And you want to give yourself a break here and take your time. When I'm at a show, I, I zoom around this and people think you should just go around without stopping, but I do stop. Now to help you better to understand what you want to do, the goal is, is to bring the two fabrics together right there. Before I begin though, I have to first decide or set up the foot so that I know I'm getting a quarter inch seam allowance. Let me get out my measuring tape. Are there any questions that need to answer? Diana, Diana Rose joined us from uh, Florida. Hi, Diana from Florida. What's the weather like there? Is it sweaty and drippy or beautiful? I hope you all had a wonderful 4th of July, by the way. We didn't get to have fireworks here in Arizona. We were under extreme fire danger. Hi from New Jersey. That's where my sister Kathy live and all my beautiful nieces. Well, not all of them, as I also have one here. 
And uh, you're not seeing me live right now, Peg? She's not seeing it? Diana Rose, is, is this working? And I got the message so, I didn't like. No, if they're not seeing it. And then, then it's not, it's not, they're not seeing what I'm doing. Are you guys not seeing what I'm doing? And Donna <laughs> Mead just joined us from Chesterfield, Mich Mich Michigan. So, um, anyone, are any of you able to see me right now or see the foot on the sewing machine? Okay. All right, good. So... I'm not sure why some of you are not seeing it. My daughter, Lynn, lives in Durango, and they've been having a major fire there for a very long time. Oh, good. All right. Yay, yay, yay. So, if you guys uh, have ever done this before and you, and you didn't succeed, you're supposed to hit the wow face. That way you guys can identify each other and share your stories. I'd love to hear your stories of how you have tried to sew these curved pieces before. We're going to go ahead now and set the seam allowance. Oh, hi, Jerry. I'm glad you can see me now. So I have my machine set on a left needle position, and you just kind of bring it down so that it hovers over one of the lines on the measuring tape, and then you lower the foot, and then turn the nut on the presser foot, and it moves the wire over to the quarter-inch mark. i got to plug in my phone really quick because it's going to go... It's telling me to plug in for better video. Sorry, we're just doing this our first time, and I plan on doing more if you guys enjoy it. So now you can see within there, I have selected a... Let me see if I can zoom in for you. Can't zoom in on the video. But you can see that you're just using the lines of a measuring tape to position the needle on the machine the quarter inch distance away from the wire. And the wire is the real guide on this foot. Donna Mead is not seeing anything yet. Donna well, Mead. Donna, if you, if you can't um, find the live video, let me make sure we have it set for public. I know we had it yep. set for public. It is set. Okay. Know that we will have the video on our YouTube channel and on Facebook afterward for you to watch. We do hope that we're ke we're getting, you know, everybody. So when I designed this foot, I did design it for a woman who was born blind and deaf. She was taking tailoring at the Braille Institute when we met. And this is the principles behind it. As you work with the foot, you are using that wire to guide you and you just gently push toward the foot and see how it won't let the fabric go further than the wire itself. So your focus is always on the front of the foot and you just keep bringing the fabric around, always touching the white part of the guide. And, you're, and you can be really messy and cram that fabric like that and it'll still go like that. Oh, somebody can't see and she's crying. So. Uh, right under the thing it says join, so I'm sure you just push the button and join, right? Try it. And are you seeing the video? So you're not seeing it either. Why aren't you? I don't know. Some people are seeing it. So do you have to follow? Are you already following us? I don't know, but I'm going to keep filming because some people are going to see this afterward and we don't want to look like we're fumbling all the way through it. I'm so sorry you can't see it, but know that I plan on doing more of these and we will figure out. I watched all these tutorials to make sure that I didn't fumble today and despite it, we're having a little technical difficulty. So. Okay. They're not, a few other people aren't seeing it. Real Rancher, New Mexico. Martha just joined us from Real Rancher. Okay. So here we go. We'll go ahead and bring these two fabrics together, lower the presser foot. And what your goal is, is to make sure that the wire on the presser foot is right off the edge of the material. And then you don't have to pay attention to it anymore. You just watch the front of the foot. Think of the front of the foot as the front door to your house. And if it is, this line of fabric, all this curved fabric here, this is all the neighbors on that side of your block, all lined up to come to your house for dinner. 
and this edge of the material are all the neighbors on the other side of the block and each of these neighbors are going to come through your door but they cannot come through the door one neighbor at a time they have to come together through the door so now let me get the camera ready in position and i will show you while i sew you just go ahead, just go ahead and start bringing the fabrics together at the guide ignore everything else little bit movement little sewing a little bit of sewing and stop a little sewing and stop you don't have to keep going all the way around and it's really important not to stretch the fibers so you want a, a very very light touch the same amount of pressure I use to brush salt off a table so we just keep bringing those neighbors together at the door and if you only look right there ignoring everything else and when you're finished it comes together and this is when it gets a little bit tricky because you got to hold it to the end. There we go. Let me cut this. My cutter is not working on the machine. What were you pointing at? I, I lost my presser. It's dropped on the ground. I had another one of these hung. Do you know where it went? There it is. Here we go. And then you just take, and you can see how beautiful that stitching line is all the way around. And we're going to press it and take it to the back. And we just go ahead and use the presser. It's really important to not use a, an iron with steam on a curved piece because it can cause the fibers to stretch out across the bias. And when they do stretch out and you go and sew it into a quilt, then after it's washed and it goes in the dryer, the fabrics can shrink and make puckers. So many pretty pressers. Yes, I love my pressers. <laughs> I've been having a lot of fun introducing these um, recently to you. This is our, what color is this one? This is our sea green. And the latest is a set of, ni of uh, neon colors. What's going on? You can't comment? No. Why can't you comment? Aren't you logged in as me? I, you log, yeah, you, you. Okay, so I, just relax. We're just going to figure it out. So this is our latest. It's called Passionate Pink. And what we do is we use this edge right here and drag the, the presser across at a, like a 30 degree angle across that. And you can see how you get this beautiful crisp press. Then you just flip it over and you also can set your seam just as you would normally do with an iron. And what's really nice about the, the dies that we used to cut is that this is just a slight bit bigger than square so that you can square it up and uh, be a little bit wonky on your holding of your hands and still have the right size square when you're finished. So I think maybe if you, you guys want me to sew one more, what's hard? Okay, Peg, she's got me. So I think people are just figuring it out. And uh, we're going to go ahead and sew another one so that you have a good idea about it. And then I'll go ahead and take questions if any of you have any questions. Okay, sew one more. Here we go. Take and pretend the fabrics are straight. I know it seems a little bit hard, but if you can say things out loud to yourself, like this fabric is not curved, the fabric is straight. Line up the two ends together and we have our foot set to quarter inch. If you were doing this without our foot, you'd have to think about how straight you're lining everything up. But because the foot does the guiding for you, um, my focus is only on bringing these two fabrics together. So these are two different fabrics pointing in two completely different directions, and it can really mess with your brain. I've also found that it's better to try this with two colors, two different colors. Never practice with the same color material. It's not as easy on the brain. So we're going to just gently, this is how I hold my hand with this hand. I, um, just kind of grab it a little bit, but it's very light hold, kind of like I'm trying to tickle it. In this hand, I'm only just my finger moving it left and right. I'm not actually grabbing grabbing the fabric. Just focusing right there, and you just bring the fabrics together, ignore everything else, and just keep bringing it around. 
little bit at a time. You don't have to go fast. And I'm looking through my cell phone at this, so it's, my brain is having a really hard time with it today. And I highly recommend that when you do learn how to do this, that you do like maybe 12 of them in a row so that you are um, you become more comfortable holding your fabrics this way. You're going to feel really, really weird because if you can see back here, the fabric starts to bunch up and it seems like something's going wrong. Remember, your eye is always focused on the present, not the future and not the past. So we just go ahead and just keep focusing on the front and just keep bringing those fabrics together and the machine pulls those fabrics through. And then when you're done, you have another curve. And once again, pressing with one of our pressers rather than an iron will decrease the chances of your... Yes, we do. We, uh, Lynn Moody from Australia, we do ship worldwide and have for the last 30 years. And this is our, in August will be our 30th year anniversary of serving all of you. I have had a wonderful career taking care of all of my customers and making it so that you can all achieve your sewing and quilting dreams. So Peg, how did you do it? You should share how you did it. Did you pin all the way around? And did you guys all share what sewing machine you have in your in the comments? I want to know how many machines you have. So let's go ahead and you can take and we'll just talk now for a little bit. Michelle. Sorry about that. Now you get to see what we have over by the window. <laughs> Lots of fun sewing stuff here in my sewing room. And um, I don't know if any of you have any more questions. I will address some questions here verbally rather than writing it down. But now after the video, I will go in the comments and I will respond to any of your questions. Uh, this is the, what you were seeing was the Satin Edge Presser Foot by Creative Feet. It is a sewing machine foot that is uh, unique to all other sewing machine companies' feet. And I designed it for, like I said, a lady who was blind and deaf taking tailoring at the Bra Braille Institute when I met her. And I was only 19 at the time. I'm now 55. So, let's see. We are not necessarily set up correctly, so I'm not sure... I know that the messages were coming through on the phone and I could answer them, but they don't appear to be coming through on the computer. So are there any questions, Michelle? No. Lynn Nowoski, I know that name because I've seen I've seen a ship to her. She says she's embarrassed to tell you what machine she's got. Mary Engel has a baby lock embroidery, Janome, and a featherweight. Joanne Mowers, and just I one. Janome Magnolia Magnol Magnol model. Yay. It's always fun to get something for free. I do plan, I do have a featherweight sewing machine I purchased recently. It's uh, needing a little bit of service. I am a sewing machine mechanic, so it's um, taking me a little while to get time. And I don't see as well as I used to, so servicing my featherweight became difficult. I may actually have to have a mechanic do it just because I can't see as well as I used to. Uh, those of you who know that I broke my shoulder, I'm healing very well, as you can see. I just can't lift my arm all the way up, but I don't have any more pain. And um, it is inspiring me to come up with some more products to help you with sewing and your creativity. So you can expect a lot more in the future from me. And if you have any, any problems that you are, char you are facing with your physical body or with your eyesight and your sewing, please don't hesitate to ask me. I've been working with people... Um, with these challenges for over 30 years now. So I'm here for you and I and I feel for you as well. Any other questions? Um, Peg Luby, no pinning. Follow, followed a tutorial by Color Girl Quilts, I think. That's awesome. I know there's a few other teachers that don't teach you to pin and they have figured out that you can go all the way around. It's nice to know that your seam allowance is always a quarter inch with this foot and... Uh, if you got it, if you did well without it, that's awesome. That means you'll do even better with our foot. Yeah, she said she has a ruler to cut these out and sew just like you did. Perfect, yeah. Jerry Howard says, 
Are you just doing the creative feet today, or will you show me the sewing with the hoops? I would love to show you a little Octahoot fun. I don't know if you guys want me to start a new live feed on that, or just go do a little playing around. You want me to quilt or embroider with the Octahoops? Lynn says, happy you're recovering going so well. Thank you. So this is going to be saved on our YouTube channel and also within our Creative Feet uh, fan page. And if you are not yet a fan, on, please uh, like our, our Facebook page and feel free to share this video with your friends as well. The more sharing you do and the more chatting you do and the more liking you do and the more funny faces that you click on, the better our videos rate and the more videos we will be producing. Good question, Mary Angle. I have yet to use your products and I have them all. What would you recommend that I try first? <sighs> That's a tough question out of all my stuff. Um, do you need any napkins? Because napkins and our satin edge foot, you can sew a satin stitch right on the edge of the material. And that is the fastest project that you can do. You just take a piece of material, cut it, and I use spray starch to starch it if you don't want to fuse them together. And you can make a double-sided napkin that way if you do that. So is it quilting or embroidery that you want me to show on the Octahoops? I would imagine it's probably quilting since this is a quilting segment. And I wasn't ready for this. So Mary Engel does say sure about the napkins. Jerry Howard says I want to learn an easy way to free motion. Okay. So free motion, octahoops. They allow you to do free motion quilting and embroidery. I'm gonna step over here really quick and show you something. This right here is the uh it, it's it's gotten kind of old. Lots of little furry things. I don't even think it's sticky anymore, but um, I'm gonna, I would like to do a video soon showing you guys how to embroider over fabric that you already have. And this is, this is like a really good beginner thing to do with the Octahoops. The Octahoops have these little handles that drop into the frame and let you color with your sewing machine. Even if you only have one hand, you can do this. As you might have seen, my friend Terry, who's um, paralyzed on her right side, has actually embroidered and quilted with these Octahoops. This is a project that I did. This is our um, something I'm going to teach. This will be a full-on class showing you how to dye your fabric. And even if you can't draw, you can do that. And I mean all of you. Yeah, you, the one thinking that you can't do it. Even you. And uh, that is my goal is to make it so you all get to do uh, free motion. So let me see if I can grab... A piece of fabric and I think I have something right here right next to right next to this and <laughs> this is my dog Tinkerbell Lynn's asking does stick and tear work well for embroidered kitchen towels if you use our hold light first on the back of the towel and then iron it onto the back of the towel then the loops won't get pulled out of our stick and tear this is Tinkerbell she was born with only one eye, has a hair lip, and a crooked nose. And she's always by my side. And she seems to know she's being filmed right now. <laughs> so I'm going to put her down and show you a little quilting. This is a piece of fabric I already had ready. And what we do is we're going to go ahead and take off the satin edge foot. And go ahead and remove the snap-on adapter that comes with my machine. It's raining. We have rain, yay, sorry. We're in Arizona and we haven't had any. So it's raining right now. Oh, I hope it moves into Colorado. And I'm putting on my invisible foot. There you go. Isn't that amazing? It's the most invisible of all feet. Peg says Tinkerbell is beautiful. Tinkerbell. Thank you. So you can see um, how you can't see the foot at all. Isn't that amazing? But I'm really just teasing you. Because I'm the inventor of a line of sewing machine feet, so what I created here is not an embroidery hoop. 
or free motion hoops, but a giant foot. Yeah, that eliminates the need for the little one. One frame is going to go underneath the quilt and you won't be able to see it at all. The other frame goes on top and drops inside and then you're able to just slide your quilt. And I mean, it, it glides like ice skates on ice. It's a really, really light hold on the fabric. But before you do that, what you want to do is take the two frames, go to the kitchen, get away from your sewing machine so that you can just learn how to bring the corner of one frame into the corner of the other using your bad hand. So just bring the corner and bring it in, do this, and then you're bored and you're like, come on, Claire, I've got this. I don't need to do this anymore. And I'm like, yeah, do it for about 15 minutes more. Just keep bringing the frames together and sliding them around. And what you're doing is you're training your non-dominant hand to hold those frames together. Because what we're gonna do is place one underneath. You won't be able to see it anymore. And then if you take the handle and put the handle into the frame and start to write, you can see that it doesn't move the quilt. What moves the quilt is bringing one corner into the corner of the other. And that's all you need to do to get the fabric to stay together. So in the beginning, this is how I show it at a show. I take my hand, and, and if you uh, look at me, Michelle, you'll see. This is how you should quilt. I'm serious. Rest your head on your dominant hand. We're going to lower the foot. Even though there's no foot, I'm lowering the presser foot. That brings the tension disc together and stops the bird nest from create, being created underneath, for those of you who've ever seen that before. So as you are quilting for the first time, you want to just kind of train this hand to move the fabric around without using the handle. And once you get the hang of moving it, and you can see how I was able to do that. Joanne, it's raining in Prescott Valley. Lynn's asking, um, do you do classes in Arizona at your classroom if you have one? We are planning on doing that, and I... Uh, I'm only one human. I keep trying to do it, and uh, life has just not made it possible yet, but it is in the works. Be sure to join our newsletter at creativefeet.com so that you'll be notified, and we will also notify everyone on Facebook. The problem with Facebook is you don't always get our notifications. Um, there's so much. I'm sure you've noticed. You just you go on Facebook, and there's this coming in and this coming in, and you don't you don't necessarily know when we post something. That's why we're going live so that you can see us because they they give live videos a uh, special spot on Facebook so we can reach you better. If you have not received a newsletter from us in a while, know that we've sent out like four this week because of because we have a brand new CreativeFeet.com site and new products being introduced on a daily basis this week, very exciting time. Um, go into your email and look in your promotions folder for, for emails from us and make sure that you are checking your spam folder to see if we're in there. Uh, I can't see the name of it. They are wondering, um, they missed the beginning and they're always amazed at what you do, what you can do. So this just... is a pre, this is a live video right now. So hi, you're at least getting in a little bit on the live part. Know that once we're done, this video will be on YouTube and you'll see it or on Facebook and we will later upload it to YouTube. So it will be forever stored in our, on our Creative Feet fan page here at uh, Facebook and also on our YouTube channel. And then we'll probably also share it on our newsletter to let everyone know that we sent it out as we try to get and reach all of you as best we can. So this is to continue on the quilting part. This top frame and bottom frame, there's a bottom frame underneath there, are not locked together. They're brought together and kept together by bringing one corner to the corner of the other. And then you just move them. Once you get the hang of moving them together, then you drop the handle into the frame. And this handle is where your really, really, really good accuracy comes in. You rest your hand on the frame beneath it and elbows down on the table. So no sitting like this, <laughs> no neck ache, no back ache, no shoulder pain, no hand pain because it glides. You just rest and my chair is a little high because I put it up high because I'm so short when I film. But if I were sewing right now, um, seriously making something for myself, I would lower my seat way down and uh, push the sewing machine far back so that you can lay down on the sewing machine. I mean rest while you quilt. So here we go. 
drawing with my fingers and then you need to know what you're going to quilt before you quilt or you won't quilt anything at all. So there's a little heart for you. If you can doodle a heart on a piece of paper, you can doodle a heart on a quilt. If you can do it once, you can do it twice, three times, and just continue. So what am I doing now? I have no idea. Oh, so I did some silly little thing. So it's best to have a pattern to follow on your material before you begin. But here's how you can draw a feather. So you just come up and come back down over the line and then say out loud teardrop as you draw a teardrop. And if you keep saying teardrop every time, you see how I just slide to reposition? You can get a better teardrop if you speak to yourself out loud. This is a very fun thing to do as long as you don't make it so serious and never try to quilt on a, on a quilt that's taken you a long time to make. Just go ahead and start on, a, like this is just a scrap piece of material. For those of you who are thinking pebbles are just outside of your reach, know that a pebble is a zero. So if you've drawn a zero on a piece of paper before, you are qualified to draw a zero. And it's just different sizes. This is also something to remember it's better not to use dark color thread on a white fabric when you're learning or a light fabric. It's better to go light thread on a dark. You will like the look better. And know that I have not lowered my feed dogs. So you're seeing the fabric moving a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and lower them. Anybody have a question? Oh, Marianne, uh, she says she travels to Arizona from November through March. Hope to have a class sometime then would like to learn in a personal setting. I just did It's Marianne. I just uploaded you can I'm sorry. I just uploaded my uh, summer, fall, winter schedule on uh, creativefeet.com on our shows and events page. However, I was told by one of the shows that um, the Puyallup show and one other show Oh, Tucson are both already sold out, so I may not even be able to get into those shows. So I might pull down those shows and schedule something live up here in Prescott, Arizona. So be sure to um, join our newsletter, check your spam folder, make sure our newsletters are not going in your spam folder, check your promotions folders. Know that uh, if you're on our groups page, you might get um, more notifications from me. And if you you can't really friend me personally anymore because I have too many friends. <laughs> so um, you can, it's not the best way to reach me anyway. Better to be in our Creative Feet groups page, which I believe is, is uh, there's a link inside of the Creative Feet fan page to it. They, they have it like tied together now. But it is uh, Claire Rowley Creative Feet Facebook group. And let's see, anything else? Mar Marianne replied just oh that would be awesome and we'll watch for it so I really do want to teach live classes but I also want to reach everybody so our desire is to create an online community at creativefeet.com now that we have our new wonderful website um, my son and I are working hard to figure out the best way to create clubs for you are not not necessarily a club more like an academy where we have uh, you take prerequisite classes so that you're not jumping in at an advanced level class trying to do something and then feel bad about, you know, what you did. Learning in the right way, just like you started in nursery school, went to kindergarten, and then, uh, you know, the rest of it. You didn't start in college. So uh, sometimes you guys bite off a little bit more than you can chew. If I can give you any advice on closing this video, because it really should end I could go all day though, because those of you who know me, I can talk all day long. Um, but this really should end. It, my, my advice to you is, number one, believe that you can do what you want to do. Um, choose something that you really want to make. Don't make something someone else says that you should make. And after this video, within seven days, try at least one thing. You got seven days and you're going to try at least one thing that, that you are, where you're pushing yourself a little bit beyond the normal sewing that you're doing. 
I was devastated when I heard from heard one of my customers had not sewn in 16 years. She's been seeing me and she never even uses her sewing machines. She just keeps buying new ones. If there's anything I can do to get you guys sewing, I, I really, really, really want to get that to happen. So um, in the comments below, anything that you've ever wanted to do, know that I am uh, knowledgeable in all types of sewing, quilting, embroidery. There isn't a type of sewing that I haven't done, taught, or worked with companies to help them. So I'm, uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to play with you. Are you ready to play with the creative feet and the octa hoops? If you are, I'd love to see you share pictures at in the comments on this after the video, and uh, see you next time.